Good morning, everyone. It's Karen Hooley, and I'm here today with Live Wednesday with Karen. I've rebranded a little bit the live stream, but I wanted to just say welcome to everybody, everyone who's new. Make sure you pop into the chat and say hello and tell me where you're from. In the meantime, I just wanted to let all the new people know that um, if you are wanting to learn what, more about me, um, you can find me at karenhooley.com. That link is right here below. Uh, you can find out everything, um, patterns, books, classes, all the things that are Karen Hooley designed. So make sure you check that out. And while you're there, make sure you subscribe to my newsletter. I just put a link down here at the bottom. And if you would like to subscribe to my newsletter, you will get a free pattern right up front. And then um, every year on January 1st, you get the new free pattern. And it's not something recycled for my catalog. I design a brand new uh, pattern every year for my newsletter subscribers. And then you'll get 25% off all new released patterns, discounts on books and classes um, as they're released. And you'll find out everything first. So make sure you subscribe. If you're not watching on YouTube, make sure you do check out my YouTube channel. Oops, let me put that up there. Okay, today is an interesting day. Um, the YouTube channel is down here. Um, check it out. I go live every Wednesday at 9 a.m. on YouTube. And now, for those of you who might be watching on Facebook, I also go live on Facebook. Um, that's another long story that I'll get into a little bit later. But I am going live in both places every Wednesday from now on. And uh, make sure you you subscribe, you hit the thumbs up button too here on Faith, on YouTube. Uh, that will help with the algorithms and show my videos to more people. If you are not watching on, um, if you're watching after the fact, I guess is what I wanna say, um, you, you're probably watching on Rumble or you are watching on my website. Um, if you are watching on Rumble or not watching on Rumble, go ahead and check out my Rumble channel. It is growing by leaps and bounds, so make sure you check it out and subscribe there as well. And I forgot to put the link in the system for Facebook, but I am on Instagram, so make sure you check out my Instagram feed. I'm active there. I try to post at least once a day there on Instagram, so make sure you check it out. And if you're looking for me on Facebook, make sure you type in Karen Hooley Designs. Um, so I'm going to just, I've got to remember to put that in for next week. But Karen Hooley Designs is my page, all one word. Um, it can be, you can type in facebook.com slash Karen Hooley Designs. And that's my Facebook page. It's, um, going, I'm going to be streaming live there. I'm going to be posting there. Um, at this point, I'm not planning to have a group, but I may, you never know. Um, right now, um, I guess I should probably address that little thing a little really quick before I go to the chat room. But um, with Facebook, they don't allow me to do certain things on Instagram without having a page on Facebook. And people have been liking that page, even though I had almost nothing up. So as of yesterday, this the page is up. It's got some, some information up there. It's got a new banner and all that stuff. So, and I've been posting to it over the last um, few days just to, to get some, some content there. I'll be doing more as the weeks progress. Um, I don't know what else I will be doing there, but I, if you're a Facebook user, make sure you follow me at, face, at Karen Hooley Designs on Facebook. Okay, I'm gonna head over to the chat room and say hello first, and then we'll talk about this whole new setup that I've got here going on. Uh, let's see, we've got Linda. Daisy and I are here from snowy Southwest Chicago suburb. Yay, you smashed the, the, the button. Hi, Linda, it's good to see you here. I'm glad you're here. And you're still getting snow, I'm assuming. Um, we finally stopped, which is good. Um, and we're just really cold. We're in the, in the low 20s, or the high 20s, low 30s. I think today the high is supposed to be the 36 or 38. So oh. anyway. <laughs> And Teresa's here. Good morning. It's good to see you. Um, I'm glad you're here. You're probably getting a lot of snow there in Utah, too. And Renee is here. Good morning, Renee. It's good to see you here. 
Um, so I have this new setup here. Um, one of the things I've been really frustrated with when I was sitting at my desk is that, um, and you're still getting a little bit of the purple on my glasses. It's not so bad today um, because I have the computer adjusted so I can still see the computer, but it's not hitting my face as, as hard. I'm still waiting for my new lenses that are supposed to get rid of that purple. Um, but it's, uh, it's a hard thing to deal with for me. So, I mean, just looking at myself, I feel like I, I, I feel like my eyes are always covered up. So, um, I have this new setup. Um, eventually I will do a video of how it's all set up. I'm sitting in a different corner in my office. In fact, my desk is directly in front of me. <laughs> So um, my la I just moved my laptop over here on a little table so I can read the comments. And I, um, I just, I'm, and this is an area of my office that literally has a chair so that I can crochet in it. And I have my spinning wheel usually here in front of me. Um, I moved that over um, but um, so that I can spin here as well. But it's an area you can see there's nothing. Well, there, I have all of this here but there's still stuff missing down here. And this whole wall is empty right now. And I haven't decided what I'm gonna do there yet. <laughs> so um, eventually you'll see some stuff coming up here. I just decided to put my, my dressmakers dummy up here with, um, this is my pretentious shawl. I know people are gonna ask me. Um, I just saw someone else popped in. Uh, oh, no, um, Teresa says, actually not too much snow there, just enough this morning to muck up the roads, of course. Of course, <laughs> mucking up the roads is what snow does best, isn't it? Um, yeah, so I'm, but, but I'm glad it's not too bad. So that's good. Um, but anyway, I know people are going to ask about the shawl. This is pretentious. I'm going to sh actually share my screen with you so you can see um, on my website, just so you know where it's at. Um, there we go. So. Can you guys see that? That's pretentious. I don't think I have any of these left in print. Yeah, I just have digital patterns now. But what's really cool about pretentious is that it's done with gradient yarns kits. And it's um, the dyer who originally did this, this sh um, shawl with um, is no longer dyeing yarn. Um, Black Trillium, she was one of my favorite dyers out there. In fact, she was the first indie dyer I ever worked with. Um, back in the late 2000s, before 2010, I think, um, I did a sock club where I, every month, every other month I was releasing socks, uh, a sock pattern with yarn that was dyed in her yarn. And um, that's how we started working together because she was, she lived locally to me, uh, local to me. So we would meet in the middle. We were about maybe a half an hour apart. So we would meet in the middle at a Whole Foods grocery store parking lot and she'd I'd give her a check and she'd give me the yarn for the yarn club and that's how we started working for each other and or working with each other I should say and when she started doing gradients um she asked me to pick two gradients that didn't necessarily um go together um I don't know how else to describe it and so we picked that I wouldn't, wouldn't normally work together. So I picked a blue and a kind of a, a raspberry color and we, I designed this shawl using it. Uh, but her gradients are no longer available. You can use mozzarellas if you know mozzarella from me talking about her all the time. De um, definitely check into hers, but you need, I think it's like 1350, yeah, 1350 yards of, uh, fingering weight yarn. So you don't have to use gradients. You could use, you know, hanks of yarn. You could combine two or three or four different hanks that you might have in your stash. Um, remember last week I talked about the color wheel a little bit and you could use your color wheel to pick out four colors that might go together that you wouldn't normally put together based on what's in your stash and just do this shawl. But I do have it. It is available on my website. The pattern's um, $7.50. So I know people always ask me whenever I have something up on my dressmaker dummy. So I just wanted to make sure 
Um, it's under pattern. It's under um, the shop under shawls, obviously. Um, I'm going to show you a couple other pictures of it. Um, this is, it's easier for me to show you the full width of the shawl here. If I can, if it's going to let me. Whoa. Well then, <laughs> my, okay, here we go. There we go. Now it's going to let me um, pull up the picture. Well, you can't see the whole width, but it's an asymmetrical star shawl. You start at the wide end. I think you start at the wide end. No, you start at the point and you get, get wider. So um, it's asymmetrical. I've got a bunch of different stitches in there. I've got some stripes in there, like you can see in there. Um, I've got, you know, eyelets. I've got some lace in there. So if it's an interesting, fun pattern. If you've got a bunch of gradients or some colors that you want to put together, it's a great shawl. So anyway, that's enough for that shawl. But I thought I'd share just because you guys always ask when I... Oh, and this on me, I, I didn't pull it up, but this is <clears throat> my Warp Speed scarf. It's kind of keeping my neck warm right now. Um, it's This is done in a gradient yarn. I started it, I think I started at the dark. No, I started at white and it automatically, I just kept going until I used up most of the, the skein to the darkest blue. So if you're interested in that, um, there's a good way to use a gradient yarn that maybe you don't know what to do with. So this is warp speed. Um, anyway, okay, so let's see. Renee says, I bought a color wheel last week, so glad you suggested it. Good, good. I mean, this is a, um, <clears throat> a really good way to figure out how my hair is doing weird things today. Um, it, I have a lot of static with this cold weather. So if my hair starts sticking out all over the place, you know why. Um, I, the color wheel, I've actually, um, I started a class uh, yesterday with a knitter, knitting designer who does a stash kind of overhaul class. Her name is Marie Green of Olive Knits. Um, I don't know if you can still register for the class because the class officially launched and I don't think that she's taking more, more people, but it's uh, like called like stash dash, I think. And it's basically reworking your stash. And I thought um, one of the things, I mean, I'm still going through the introduction every week. She drops a few more classes and it goes for six weeks or, um, or she drops a few more videos talking about how to organize your stash, how to, um, how to use your stash. Um, you know how we go to the, to the shops and we see this beautiful yarn and we buy one hank or we buy two hanks like I do a lot of times. And then I don't know what to do with it. Or sometimes it just sits in my stash for a while. And, um, and then I end up either selling it because it's not bringing me joy anymore, or I give it away or something like that. So she's, she's going through in six weeks how to do this. And I, believe if I read everything correctly, she's going to talk about the color wheel. So if, if she gives me any um, really good ideas for the color wheel, I'll let you guys know about that. Um, okay. A bunch of minis would be fun to use up with the pattern. Yes. And that's the other thing too about stashes is that, and I am, <clears throat> I have, I have two packs of minis over there that I have had probably for well, one of them I know I've had for at least five years. It's probably more. Um, and the other one I've had for at least two years because I got it pre-pandemic um, from Smozzarella. I think I've shown it to you a couple of times with the with the reds. Um, that I don't know what I'm going to do with them right now. Um, the one that I've had for at least five years, I know they're still making that color. It's an Anzula color gradient mix. Um, and I, I can't remember if it's... Wuthering Heights might be, it was a themed to a book. So that might be something you'll see in the future, um, me doing something with, but um, I can't give that one up because I just love the colors and I just don't know what to do with them. And so with gradients, if you've got a bunch of gradients, mix and match them and see what they do. I mean, the colors I have in the two sets, they would not go together. One's a super pastel and one is a gradient red. The gradient red would do really well in here. I'd have to I'd have to check with mozzarella to see what other colors she has 
um, that would go with it that might make this pop. But um, I, I, I don't know what I'm going to do with either one of them yet. So we'll figure that out soon. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So let's talk about what's new in the shop. And speaking about buying yarn, but this one actually, when I saw it, I knew I had a project for it. So let me bring up my banners here really fast. Um, okay, so the these are polka dot sheep. Can you guys, let me see, there we go. Polka dot sheep. Oops, I'm going the wrong direction. This new setup, I'm gonna have to get used to what I am looking at. So polka dot sheep, this is her tender foot base, which is a fingering, obviously. Um, this variegated one is called Aurora. Isn't that pretty? It's got purples and blacks and teals and it's all the colors in the, the Aurora Borealis. And then this one is called Cornflower, which is actually one of her new colors and they go together. So when I saw these, when she released Aurora and, or yeah, she released Aurora and uh, they're both basically newer colors. And um, I, and she paired it with the cornflower. I immediately thought of something I want to do with it. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. <laughs> so, but this will probably be something you'll see next year. Um, I'm really excited about these two colors, but I did, I put her, I did not put her banner up, but her website is a polka dot sheet.com. Um, she is a dyer out of Montana and I believe she's in whitefish if I remember correctly. Oh, she doesn't have, yes, hand dyed in whitefish. Um, she's also on Instagram. So if you are on Instagram, I highly recommend you follow her because she's got some beautiful colors that she posts. This tenderfoot is an 80 20 and it's 80. Superwash Merino, 20% nylon, uh, 400 yards per skein, um, and or per 100 grams, I shouldn't say skein, because sometimes they wind a little bit more just to, to make it work um, for the 100 grams. But in, uh, there's 400 yards and 100 grams. And they recommend, well, she has just needles on here, one size one to three needles. So that would be, um, you know, like up to an F crochet hook. Um, based on what she says, I, you, you could even go as far as, as a G with this if you wanted to. Um, I love fingering, obviously, <laughs> but I, I discovered her when I was still living on the west side of the state. And she, um, she uh, one of the local yarn shops that I used to do uh, trunk shows with when I was living over there, um, started carrying her yarns. And I found the tenderfoot on the wall in two colors. One was a speckled, kind of a pumpkin-y, white pumpkin-y speckle. And the other was a pumpkin color. And they went together. And you can actually find those yarns being used in my modern Italian lace crochet book. It's a shawl that I did. It's a triangular shawl. And I cannot think of the name of it right now. Architectura. Architectura is what it is. Um, so it's architecture in English. Um, so um, that's when I first used her yarns and I absolutely fell in love with her base. Um, and I've been looking for an excuse to buy some more yarn of hers. And when these two colors came up, I had to. I mean, look at that. Look at those colors. I mean, this one with the depths on the black, uh, it makes all the other colors in here pop. I don't know if you guys can see. There we go. That's better. Can you see all those teals and the purple? And then there's the blacks in there. And there's kind of a little bit of pink in there, um, some green in there. It's just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous here. And I see there's some comments here. Hang on, let's see. Love those blues. We love it for the name Aurora Borealis. Well, remember last week I showed you, I think it was last week, I showed you some yarn from Fiber Seed. And that was Aurora Borealis. So, and that's what this one was um, named for, I believe, is the Aurora Borealis. So, but it's it's more than just blue. It's it's kind of purpley and greens and teals and black. And let's see if I can, I got to learn where my camera is now. 
but yeah, so there you go. So I think it's just gorgeous yarn. So I just wanted to make sure I showed you that before I, so polka dot sheep, I highly recommend her, highly recommend you get, um, sign up for her newsletter too, because every week she features a new yarn color way that's on sale. So um, you might want to check out her newsletter as well. Stephanie. Oh, Stephanie, you're here. Good morning. You like those blues too. Yep. It's gorgeous. Um, this cornflower, it's, it's, it's blue, but it's got that purple tint to it. You know, cornflower blue always has a little bit of purple in it. So, um, it's, it's in the cool range, which is what I absolutely love. And it's a tonal. So if you look at it up close, I, you can't really see, well, maybe you can a little bit on the camera. Um, the camera is actually, uh, well, at least on my camera, because I'm using my cell phone as a main camera, um, I, it looks pretty close to what the actual color is. On my computer screen, it's not so close. Um, but it's a tonal, so you get those whites and, and, and you know, where the, the um, dye doesn't take as, as um, sharply as on other parts. So it goes from like the, the really dark cornflower blue and it gets um, kind of lighter and then it darker again. So it's really pretty. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous color. So I'm really excited to start on that one. I don't know when I will, probably um, in a couple months, but yes, that will be one of my new things um, or my new patterns for next year. Um, also I, in the shop, um, my husband and I, not every night, but pretty close to every night. Um, after dinner, we watch a little bit of TV. And so I'm always crocheting. And I just can't watch TV without something in my hands. So um, one of the things um, my husband did for me when we moved into this house was he gave me um, an odd desk light that he used to have in his office that he doesn't need anymore. And we put it on the, on the end table next to the couch. And I use that when I'm crocheting so I can see, you know, especially the dark colors. Well, um, it's now in this house. Um, it's, I don't know if you, I can, how I can explain it, but it gets so dark in there that sometimes I adjust the light and I think I'm just hitting my, my crochet work and I'm actually, <laughs> I'm actually angling it to hit him too. And it's like, it goes off his glasses and he's like, move that light. And so we um, saw in a magazine somewhere, these lights that you could hang around your neck. And I had seen those before and I'd talked to people who bought them and they weren't that great. And I think it was a Hershner's catalog. So I kind of asked around and I found out that this brand, I'm going to put up there, <clears throat> Lumos Lumos. So you might, if you're on social media, you probably have seen their ads, but people have bought this and it's a, it's about three ounces, four ounces, maybe goes around my neck. And each one of these lights goes on separately. So I can use them both or I can, you know, use them one at a time, um, you know, because I need more light from one side or something. So um, what's really cool is I got four settings. So that's the first setting. Then it goes down one, it goes down again, and then they go off. So um, I can adjust the light. You can use a cool light or a warm light with these. And so far, I really like them because I, I, I like the fact that these each one of these can move and they'll hold. You know, so if I want it to curve in more, I can. If I want to straighten it more, I can. So I can have it around my neck. And depending on how I'm sitting, if I'm sitting back with my feet up, I can adjust it so that it's up a little bit. If I'm sitting in a normal sitting position and I'm crocheting like this, my hands down in front of me, I can put, point them down to where I need to. So I highly, I mean, normally I don't buy things on ads like that, that I'd never heard of the brand. But I've gotten so many people that said this was a good one. So I ordered it. I really like it. And the best part about it is that it doesn't run on batteries. It's got a, um, <clears throat> a USB charging port. So I can plug in. The, I have the cable over there. Um, plug it into here. And then I can plug it into a, you know, into a battery pack or my computer to charge it. Um, and it charges and when you charge it, if you're using warm light, it'll last up to 18 hours. 
If you're using um, like the blue light, the daylight bulb kind of thing, it lasts up to 12 hours per charge. So I thought um, this is a great deal. I think I paid $40 for it with, ta with tax and shipping. So um, it's, uh, if you're looking for something like this that won't distract people, um, it's great. Um, I do have to be careful because in certain times of the day, it does give me like, you know how that you do the finger shadow things. Um, if it, if I have it hitting the wrong way, it will do finger shadows on the, uh, the TV. So, um, that's the only downside I've had, but, um, my husband was grateful that I got this. So, um, Lumos Lumos is the website. Um, Really, really, really like it. So, and you know, I won't share things with you unless I really like them. And I've had it for about five days now and it's been great for the whole time. So, and I see you guys are in, commenting again. So let me pop right in. Oh no, Stephanie, your, lap shout, uh, um, your laptop crash. Oops, wrong one. Um, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. I hope it's okay. I hope it wasn't anything major that caused you to crash, but let me know. I mean, hopefully you don't have to get a new laptop. Um, Teresa says she's checking out her site. I'm assuming that was polka dot sheet. I'm glad you are because she's got some beautiful yarns. Um, Linda says it reminds me of the wild chicory and Queen Anne's lace we get here. Oh, cool. Well then you ne definitely need those colors, Linda. Um, I have a couple of those. I just love my alt lights. I have a neck light too. Got it at Costco. Oh, I haven't seen the one at Costco. Um, but I really like this one. So definitely um, try those out. Hug lights are great. I have two of them. Yeah. You know, I finally broke down and said I, get, I need to do something for him because, you know, he's just, <laughs> he's it was driving him crazy. So there you go. <laughs> um Let's see. Stephanie says, it's, oh, your work. Oh, it crashes regularly. Oh, man. Okay. I understand. I used to have a work laptop that used to do that too. And I, well, it wasn't even a laptop back in the day. It was a desktop. But at work, it would, oh, gosh, I hated it when it crashed. Um, let's see. Who else? Oh, so no worries about it. That makes sense. Okay, so one other thing I wanted to show you or tell you about is um, if you are not a follower of Bonnie Barker at Bonnie Bay Crochet on YouTube, she did an interview with me. Um, I, it was like two weeks ago now, I guess, or a little more than two weeks ago, and she finally posted it on Monday. Um, so... Monday morning, it went live on her YouTube channel, um, and um, it's been getting some really good hits, but I wanted to give you the link to check it out because it's an interview about, we talked about how I learned to crochet, we talked about some of my favorite projects, we talked about my favorite project I ever got, we talked about how I learned to crochet, I think I said, um, uh, we talked about, uh, what else did we talk about? How I design, what, how I'm inspired to design, that kind of thing. So if you um, are interested in that, definitely check out her YouTube channel. And that will also, I'll link to that below this video and you know, on my blog post for this, uh, this live stream. So um, if you can't get that whole thing down, but highly recommend you watch. I highly recommend you follow Bonnie too. She's a great YouTuber. In fact, um, she's inspired me now to do more YouTube videos. So, and, and of course they'll go to rumble for those of you who don't watch on YouTube, it'll, will go to rumble as well. So, um, we'll be watching for that. Um, in fact, I just filmed the video yesterday. I'm going to be filming one this afternoon. So hopefully um, I'll start be, start building some YouTube videos that are um, that are standalone for you know different things. Um, I do have a project though that I am going to kind of do like a crochet long on YouTube and Rumble where I'm going to show you how to do the pieces and you can download the pattern and do them together with me, or you can just learn from the video. So. Um, 
be watching for those. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, they are. I didn't even think about that, Teresa. That would be awesome because those lights on the airplane are terrible for, sorry guys, I'm, I'm not used to having my laptop, um, you know, that the finger pad thing that you click on to click everything. <laughs> um, and so I hit it twice and the, 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 uh, the banner comes up and then it goes away. So I apologize guys. Um, but yeah, I never thought about that. That would be when I start traveling again, that would be awesome. Okay. Good to know. Um, Renee saw the interview. Thank you. Thank you. The one thing I have to laugh and I don't know, maybe you guys notice this every single week when I'm doing these videos with you, but if I'm not crocheting or knitting or have something in my hands, I am restless and I didn't realize how, I mean, I talk with my hands because I'm Italian, but the restless hands were driving me crazy when I was previewing the video before she made it live. And, and <laughs> I'd write to her, I'm going, now I understand why my family always says, go get a project <laughs> because your hands are just moving like crazy. So that was really funny that I, I never noticed that about myself until I saw that video. Okay, so, okay, so we've talked about everything that's new in the studio. Um, let's talk about my projects. So, um, let's see. Let me see here. Okay, so first thing is, I think a good portion of you are already a, par are a part of the felted bag crochet along. I just wanted to show you my finished bag that I did for the crochet along. It turned out really cute. I did striping and because I wanted to use some leftovers that I had and it turned out really well. I've still got that, some of the blocking pieces in there. I took out the top part so I could actually grab it. Um, it's pretty much dry now. I just haven't pulled everything out and I like the way it looks with it when it's stuffed. So I just left them in there. But it turned out really cute. Um, if you are interested, now that this crochet along is over for this, um, this piece, um, if you're interested in the pattern for it, um, everybody who is who is part of the crochet along knows this already, but you know, they will be getting the final pattern as soon as I get it done um, and photographed and all that. Um, but if you're interested, it'll be released later this this year. Um, I'm not sure exactly when. Um, I'm hoping to have the finished pattern in May, um, but then I don't know when I'm going to release it because I've got so many other things going on that are being released. I don't want to just be releasing things to release things. So um, I'm going to I'm going to be kind of plotting to figure out when things are going to be released. And I have a pattern that wasn't on the schedule that'll be released in June. So I have 19 patterns being released this year um, because I kind of have to do that for. It's for a shop here in Washington, for, um, and I, I have to release it then. So, um, that, so there's an extra pattern coming this year. Okay, then I have another project. Um, for those of you who bought the, um, what do you call it, the kit from Chaos Fiber, um, fiber company um, that I did for her. It's all, um, it's time to make the donuts. This is the project bag that goes along with that kit. I, last I heard, she still had, I think maybe one kit left. Maybe they're all sold out now. I don't know. Um, but if you buy the kit, you get this bag. The pattern will be released later this year to the public. So I'm not going to share that yet. Um, but if you have the kit, you know, what it is. So I'm just using that bag. I thought I better show you guys the bag from that kit. Um, but I am working on, and this is a sneak peek of a project for next year. Um, it's a shawl using a gradient yarn. Um, the gradient yarn I'm using is, ah, uh, I'm pulling from the bottom of, of the, the hank. So this is the chef. Turn it. This is the right way so the camera can see it. Um, this is the chef G's world 
Shaptis, Shaptis, I can never say it. It's a, it's a uh, Dutch word. Um, I'm going to put the link up for you for where to get this yarn or to find out about the yarn. You can get it on Lovecrafts and some of the yarn shops carry it. But this is a project. Um, it's going, it's a bottom up shawl. Um, and it's a remake of a pattern I did a long time ago that's no longer available, hasn't been available for a very long time. Um, and I'm making it a little bit different than the original. So um, it'll be it'll be like a brand new pattern when it's done. And um, I should have that done hopefully by the end of this week. And um, I can start on another project that I have. I'm also working behind the scenes in um, on another project that the one that's going to be released in June. I can't tell you more about it other than that it's going to be a fun lace project. So um, I'll be watching for that. So um, Shepji's is one of my, um, it's an interesting company. I first learned about them when I was teaching in Portland at the CGOA conference, what, like five, six years ago. I can't remember when it was now. It was the last CGOA conference I taught at before the pandemic. There were too many other things with my kids, graduations and stuff going on that I couldn't go the until before the pandemic started um i want to say it was like 2017 2016 2017 somewhere in there um so um i found out about them at that event they were there they actually came from the netherlands and they um were doing interviews with designers and stuff but they also had goodie bags for us um, when we registered for the event, when we came in and checked in and got all of our, you know, class information. And as a teacher, we always got um, extra, you know, some, some some of the vendors would give us stuff that we could, you know, if it was pertinent to our class, we could use it in class or whatever. So I got a few hanks of, of or a few little mini skeins of their yarns. And I really like them. Um, they are getting more and more popular as the years progress, which is really interesting to see. A lot of yarn shops are carrying their yarns. Um, I'm gonna, you, I see you guys are posting. Um, I really like their whorls because it's a gradient that you can really, I mean, their colors are beautiful and you really don't see them anywhere else. And they're all one skein. I mean, this skein is like a thousand meters, I think, which is crazy around 1100 yards. So um, I can do a pretty decent sized shawl with just one ball. And they're not that expensive depending on where you buy them. Um, it's not color 817. Um, that's just their product number. Renee, I saw that you did that. Um, it is color number. Hang on, their, their labels are, oh, they don't have a color number on here, but it's called Sea Breeze Tees is the name of the color. They don't have a number on it. It's called Sea Breeze Tees, but it's not color 118. 118 is their product number for the whorls. So um, that is the color I'm using, Sea Breeze Tees. <laughs> so, but I like this. It's, it's a cotton blend. I should mention that too. It's a, um, it's a cotton acrylic and it's really easy on the hands. It's 60 cotton, 40 acrylic. It's a thousand meters and it's, uh, so for in a thousand grams, you get 455 meters. And this one is somewhere, it weighs between 215 and 225 grams. So it's around a hundred or a thousand, thousand yards. I'll have to weigh it and to make sure when it's done, what the actual weight and yardage is on that, this particular hank or this particular cake of yarn. Um, you guys know how to do that, right? How to figure out how many yards you have based on the weight. Do you guys know how to do that? I'm going to pop that in. 
I, I mean, I'm going to wait for you guys to respond and have a drink of my coffee here really quick. Do you guys know how to do that? So um, if you have a hank of yarn and it says, let's say, um, 400 yards to 100 grams, you take 400 and divide it by 100 to find out how many yards per gram, right? So if you divide 400 by 100, there's four yards per gram, correct? Is that right? So it's four yards per gram. So then you take your skein or your hank and you put it on a scale and you weigh it and to see how many grams. Now I have, I usually do it in grams because most yarns these days have the gram measurements, not the ounce measurements. If you're using like Red Heart or something like that, they usually do the, the, the ounces. Um, and you can convert um, grams to ounces by knowing every 100 grams is 3.5 ounces or roughly about that. I mean, it's, it's rounded, but it's it's roughly three and a half ounces. Um, so if I have four grams per yard, because I have 400 yards in 100 grams, and that's the weight, what the way the yarn weighs out. But my hank is, uh, you know, it's instead of 100 grams, it's 105 grams because they've added a little bit of extra yarn. So I multiply 105, 105 um, grams times four. So that's like what, 420 yards. So my Hank, even though that actually says on there 400 yards to 100 grams, if the skein weighs a little bit more, you have more than that 400 yards. If it weighs less than the 100 grams, you're going to have a little bit less. So every Hank, every yarn dyer weighs out or winds their yarn out at least every yarn that I've ever used, it's, it's a little bit more in weight than what the label says. Usually there are, there are times where the Hank will be a little bit, um, or right on, right on, you know, hundred grams. I mean, and you always want to measure, weigh your yarn without the label <laughs> because the label actually adds grams to, to the yarn. So you always make sure that you, <clears throat> um, take, you know, take the label off so that, and sometimes some people, I mean, I don't do this because it's nominal enough that it's not a big deal. Um, but, um, if you're getting a hank of yarn, they're usually tied with yarn to keep them from falling apart. Um, some people will take that yarn off too, so that they actually get the weight of the yarn itself. I think it's nominal enough that it's not a big deal. And a lot of times when I'm, when I'm like, to figure out the yarn in this project, because I had a little bit left of every color. Um, what I end up doing is I weigh the project with the ends still in there because the ends are part of, before I weave them in, because the ends are part of creating the project. So I weigh it to see how much it weighs. And then I use the calculations to figure out how many yards I used in this project. And, um, <clears throat> So a lot of times you'll see in my patterns, I use, I mean, there's just throw a number out there, 354 yards of, of yarn, of fingering weight yarn. But this hank that I used might be 425 that I mentioned in, in the thing. It's because I have some leftover. And also I always add 10% to my patterns because everybody's yarn weighs out a little bit different unless they buy from the exact same manufacturer um, for the, when they dye the yarn. So, you know, if just because my Hank said 400 yards per hundred grams and mine was, let's say polka dot sheep and you're using Schmutzrella, which says 425 yards per hundred grams, hers is going to be a little bit, you know, lighter. So I always add 10% to the numbers I use 
so that you have enough yarn if you're going to make the, the project to the gauge that I give you. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Is that helpful? I mean, that's something I can, um, I've actually been thinking about doing a little mini class or a video on how to calculate the yardage that you use in a project or how to, you know, it, and it's not always perfect, um, but it's as close as you're going to get without having to unravel your entire project and put it through a yarn uh, yardage counter. So does that make sense, guys? Oh, Kelly's here. Good morning, Kelly. Good to see you. Yes, I am in a different spot. <laughs> Um, I talked about it earlier that I'm trying to, I'm trying to get away from my computer to do these lives because I the, the the glare of my glasses and things like that. So um hopefully this is a little bit better. Um and the lighting's been so bad lately. It's I mean my window is now on this side of me instead. It used to be on this, it used to be on my right when I'm at the computer, but it's on my left now. And, um, and I'm closer to the window, so it gives me a little more light. But we've been having so many gray days. Um, the lighting has been just horrible. So I noticed putting yarn up there actually today made, um, made a huge difference um, with, with colors of yarn and things like that. So um, yes, and the 10% also accommodates a little bit on the different tensions. You still want to get gauge. Because if you don't get gauge, um, all bets are off with how much yarn you're going to use. Um, everything is, every every pattern, knit, crochet, whatever, is based on a certain gauge. Because I, we weigh our swatches, you know. In fact, um, one of the projects I'm working on that I can't tell you about, I've done a million swatches. And I've had to weigh my swatch to figure out how much yarn I need for the final project. So, you know, it's gauge is super, super important with the yardage. 10% um, is not always enough um, because if you're a super, super tight crochet or you're a super, if you're a super loose crochet, it should be enough. I mean, unless you're so sloppily, um, so loose. Um, that your stitches are really loopy and, and have a lot of air in them, um, then all bets are off. But 10% um, should be enough if you're a little bit looser, but not always. I mean, if you follow the pattern to the T, but your stitches are bigger, you're going to eat up more yarn. So 10% may not be enough. Um, if you're super tight, it's going to take a lot more yarn to get to the length that my my pattern, my shawl might be, let's say shawl. If you, so gauge is super, super important. You cannot rely on the, the, the number there for the amount of yarn I used for any of my patterns. If you don't match my gauge, does that make sense? I'm not sure if anybody is posting here. Okay. Um, yeah, so, um, I mean, I always add 10% hoping that it's enough yarn to help you. I mean, that's just a, an industry standard. Most designers do that. It's usually between 10 and 15. I usually go with 10 because that's always what the magazines always told me to, to do. Um, so hi, Bonnie. I was just telling everybody about you, <laughs> our interview. So hopefully you get a few more people going over to watch it. Um, I hope. I'm glad to see you here. And Renee. Yes. Okay, good. Oh, this Awesome. So I'm glad that makes sense. Um, Bonnie, we were just talking about how to, um, how to take the amount of yards on, or take the yardage that's on a, on a yarn label and how to know if that Hank actually has you know, 400 yards or if it weighs a little more and it adds a few yards to it. So we're just talking about that and why you have to, in order to, um, I know you know this, how when I say that I'm used 735 yards, I've added 10% to what the actual yardage was and why gauge is so important 
to be able to figure that, you know, to know that that 735 yards is going to be around what you need to, to make the project. So yes, the that was so much fun. And we need to talk more often. <laughs> I miss chatting with my peeps. It was so fun. So yeah, guys, if you definitely, again, I'm just going to remind you for the, because a couple people popped in since I talked about it. Um, let me just give you the link again here really quick. Um, here's the link to the interview I did with Bonnie on Bonnie Bay Crochet's YouTube channel. So make sure you do guys go over and check that out. Um, and again, the links will all be in my, um, my show notes. So it'll be there. Anybody? Let's see. I got another comment here. Yes, we do. Yes, we definitely do. I miss chatting with everybody. Um, okay, so we've got about 10, well, nine minutes, nine minutes now. So um, does anybody have a question for me um, about anything? I mean, I, I think we've covered pretty much everything I was going to talk about. Usually you guys have more comments for me. I feel like I've been talking this whole time. So let me know if you have something you want to ask me about, um, anything that's coming up that I've talked about in the past that I may not have talked about. I don't know. Um, are you guys, I mean, with this new light, especially that I have for my, for my camera, is, are you guys getting less glare off my glasses? <laughs> Bonnie, I'm trying something new today too, because the glare on my glasses is driving me crazy whenever I do these lives. So, um, Teresa says, I got pulled away from my desk. Oh, that's okay. No worries, Teresa. When is Fern? What's Fern? I don't know what Fern is. Renee, let me know. I'm not sure what that is. Oh, when is... Oh. Oh, Linda says there's less glare. Okay, awesome. Okay. And hopefully I'll have my new lenses. I'm hoping they come in this week and that will help too. But this has been driving me crazy. Okay, so Renee is asking, when is February's pattern dropping? For the Pattern Club members, um, the patterns will always drop the second Wednesday of the month. I mean, sorry, second Monday of the month. Sorry. I'm so used to saying Wednesday for these lives the second Monday of the month. So it will, this month's will drop on the 14th. Next month, it will drop on the 14th. In April, it will drop on the, I think it's the 11th. So it's always the second Monday, okay? So um, I'm actually, for the Pattern Club people, I will be sending out a, a, a newsletter with some new features that are happening. So be watching for that. Let's see. Oh, yes, glare, less glare. Awesome. Okay. I'm so glad that you guys see what I'm seeing and what you, you're not seeing what I'm seeing. So hopefully with the new lenses, the blue will go away. That keeps showing up on my glasses. And supposedly now that I'm using a ring light with my camera, um, instead of the just using the 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 regular lights that I was using before, um, you should not even see a shine off my glasses as much. So hopefully that works. Okay. Bonnie says, I understand that. <laughs> yes, I know. I was thinking that too. I started the video and I went, oh, I should be down a little farther. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is a new tripod thing that I'm using. So I, yeah, it's going to be. So guys, I'm just telling you now, I'm going to be adjusting things as we go, but the glare was my big thing today that we needed to do, get rid of. So uh, that was huge for me. My <laughs> glasses look great. Thank you. Okay, good. I, it's, it's so frustrating for me when I see those blue, those blue things. Yeah. Well, this one is so weird because the way I have my camera set up, I can't, I mean, I feel like 
you're going to get my whole body in the, in the camera if I try to adjust it. So I think what I'm going to do is before my next live, I'm going to play with the, the height and the adjustments and all that stuff and, and get it set because I just stick it in the corner when it's done. So um, it'll all be adjusted where I need it to be before I go live next week. Awesome. Okay. Anybody else? Questions? Um, I was just trying to think because Renee mentioned the Pattern Club and now it, that triggered something in my memory and now I'm, I've lost it. It, it really sucks <laughs> when I do that. Um, uh, pattern Club. Um, new features in the Pattern Club that I'm going to send out. Uh, I don't know what it was. Um, oh, well. So, Teresa can't wait for the new pat February pattern. I'm excited. Bonnie, I'm doing a pattern club. I think I mentioned this, or did I mention this in the interview? I can't even remember anymore. Um, this year I started a pattern club where I am doing, the theme is shawls on the side. So all the shawls are made from side to side and are slowly learning new techniques on, you know, color, it'll eventually be color changes and and doing edgings all at the same time and all sorts of stuff. So um, it's it seems to be going well. People are very excited about these patterns. So um, so that's what I'm doing this year. Um, and it's going to reopen in, for those of you who are not part of my pattern club, it will reopen again in July um, with some new features that I haven't announced to the public yet. So in fact, I have a meeting on, Monday about a logo for all of this. So I'm really excited that it's going to morph into more than just what it is right now. So, um, okay. Well guys, I think, um, we've got about three more minutes, so I'm just going to, um, sign off unless you, unless you guys pop in with another question for me before I go. Um, and just a reminder, everybody, thank you for watching. For those of you watching after the fact, I really appreciate that you've watched all the way through. Don't forget to visit my website at karenhooley.com. Um, all the banners or all of the links will be in my uh, show notes, but um, I'm going to put my website up here. Um, so make sure you check out my website. And while you're there, make sure you subscribe to my newsletter, get the free patterns and all of the, the special perks that only newsletter subscribers get, the discounts and all that kind of thing. So make sure you check that out. And if you're watching on Rumble, um, make sure you so hit the subscribe button and you also um, give it a rumble. <laughs> I think that's what they call it. Um, and um, if you're watching on Facebook, make sure you give me a like on this video. I'd really appreciate it. So thanks, everybody. I'm going to sign off. And um, have a great rest of your week. Um, and I'll see you on Wednesday next week if I don't see you or talk to you before. Oh, wait. Am I getting going to get a special channel, something like Bonnie's? Um, oh, oh, you are you talking about Bonnie's watch channel? Linda, is that what you're talking about? before I answer what I'm going to say. <laughs> Linda. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. So that's what you were asking. Um, kind of, it's not going to be quite the same as what Bonnie's doing. Um, when I reopen the pattern club in July, it's going to be a full blown membership site. And of course, a lot of the videos that I have on YouTube will go in there um, and the new ones that I'm doing um, so that then they will be uh, ad free for those people who want the ads free, ad free stuff. Um, but there's also going to be a lot of video in there that's not on YouTube. That's only for the membership site. So um, it's going to be different than what Bonnie's doing, but kind of the same where you're paying for the extra perks. So does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. <laughs> and there's a lot of other features that are going to be happening too that I'm not going to go into at this point. So 
Um, he's still a few months off. So until I'm ready to, to talk about it all, I will let you know. Okay. Well, everybody have a great rest of your week. Blessings to everyone all around. Make sure you have a marvelous weekend and I will see you next Wednesday. Bye y'all.